Welcome to our latest video. In this video, we will be doing a quick review of Ubuntu 11.10. Uh, first off, you'll notice that several things have changed in Ubuntu 11.10. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is the login screen is very different. Our login prompt has been moved from the center of the screen to the left. We now have some clickable options above and below the login to allow us to, to log into other accounts. You'll notice we also have this little options button here. If you click it, you'll have other desktop environments that you can log into. Uh, by default, you will only have Recovery Console, Ubuntu, Ubuntu 2D, and User Defined Session set up in your base install. I've installed a couple others here, which we'll touch on in another video. In the top left corner, you have your PC name. You have your Ubuntu logo in the bottom left corner. The top right, we have some accessibility options for an on-screen keyboard, high contrast, and screen readers. Uh, you also have your audio slider. Uh, we have our clock with a built-in calendar, which is nice. You also have your power down button, your uh, suspend, hibernate, and shutdown options. Uh, we're going to go ahead and log into Ubuntu. Take a look at Unity. By default, Unity is the desktop built into Ubuntu 11.10. There is no classic Ubuntu set up by default. Uh, you have to install that separately, which has some problems which we'll touch on in another video. If you like Unity, if you're a big Unity fan, then you will be right at home in 11.10. The stalking ocelot wallpaper is not the default wallpaper. It is included with the base install of Ubuntu, but the first wallpaper you'll see upon booting into Ubuntu will be this kind of purplish pinkish wallpaper. I thought the stalking ocelot wallpaper looked nice for this video. The default theme is Ambience. They've included Radiance, High Contrast, and High Contrast Inverse as well. I will leave Ambience as the default. If you've migrated from 11.04, you're not going to notice a whole lot different in terms of layout and where things are, with the minus of some of the menu settings and things. Uh, but you basically have our Dash, which we had in 11.04. Uh, you can go into Media Apps, and you'll see we have our most frequently used installed apps to see everything else we have installed under that category. We also have a link to the software center for apps that are available for download. We can click an app, we can also rate it, we can go to the different submenus which are nice. If you are more familiar with previous versions of Ubuntu and the versions before Unity, the dash will take just a little getting used to because these all these categories are basically your submenus or your item menus that you had under your your traditional classic Ubuntu desktop environments. Uh, so for example, we can find games. I have Play on Linux installed. Uh, you can also search for it as well. If we go back to the home lens, say I want to find Play on Linux. There we go. I tend to find myself doing more searching through the dash than I actually find myself digging through the lenses to find the individual programs. Uh, but if you look down at the bottom, you've heard me mention lenses. These are where your lens locations are. Uh, you'll notice we have our home lens which is basically where we're at. We can go to our programs or our apps lens. We also have our files lens, which is where all of our recently accessed files are, our recently downloaded files, also our shortcuts to documents, music, pictures, videos, and your downloads folder. If you have music stored on your computer, you can access it through the music lens. These lenses can be extended through downloadable extensions for Dash. So that's nice, so you can customize the Dash to work as you want it to, which is a really nice feature to have. One of the other things you will notice is the Ubuntu Software Center has been changed. And I must say I love the change in the Software Center. It looks sharp, it looks nice. It looks kind of similar to the version of the Android Market that I run on my Honeycomb tablet. Kind of neat. I don't know if they in intended to be that way, but it, it's a sharp look to it. I really like the way it looks. Some things have moved around. We have our all software buttons. We can sort this area by choosing provided by Ubuntu, Canonical Partners, or for purchase. We'll discuss more in the purchasing section here in just a moment. We can look at what has been installed. We can likewise look through those different sources as well. It splits all the programs up into categories. So let's find our Play on Linux, be under Games, Let's Play on Linux. We can remove the package here as well. We can also go into a history where we can see everything that's been changed, installed, updated, or removed. Let's go back to all software. Remember just a moment ago we did mention the for purchase option that we can sort by. You'll notice a big section of the what's new 
especially right now, it may not be when you're viewing this video, but right now, during recording, every app that's listed in the What's New category is a for purchase app. It's an app that's for sale. I do foresee this becoming a growing trend with the Ubuntu Software Center. Just a few weeks ago, Canonical released the Ubuntu Developer Portal for everybody to have access to, which means you can go, you can log in, you can download their quickly SDK and deployment tool to be able to develop your own Ubuntu apps, which is kind of a neat feature that they're opening that up for everybody. On the same token, they're also going to allow you to sell your applications. Uh, they're going to allow you to list them up for free, or you can sell them, do whatever you want to with them. I know some people have some issues with purchasing Linux applications, especially since the operating system is free. A lot of people have the same concept that every app that comes with it should be free as well. And with the way that the market is rolling, that's probably not going to be a sustaining factor going forward. Uh, you're probably going to see more and more for sale applications being listed in the Software Center. That's just the fact of the matter. Uh, one thing you'll notice about the Software Center is if you've installed the app, you'll have a little green check mark over its icon. You'll notice I've got VLC and GIMP here installed. Uh, you have your categories down here on the left hand side where you can go in and you can see each each listing and find out what apps you want to pull down. That kind of thing. So that's the new software center. It's pretty sharp. It's pretty nice. You also notice that it integrates. You also notice that it integrates with the top taskbar as well. You'll notice that Unity looks nice. The the taskbar here on the left hand side. The buttons are kind of nice and rounded. Pretty much not a whole lot there. It's been changed other than just the way it looks is nice. Up here we have our me icon on our toolbar. This is pretty much the home of all of our online social interaction. Uh, from Gwibber. If you're not familiar with Gwibber, it's a little tool that allows you to access all of your social networks from Facebook, Twitter, Identica, uh, I believe a couple others, all from that little program. You don't have to log into the individual network websites to make any updates to your status or friends list or whatever. You can post statuses, you can read statuses, that kind of thing straight through Gwibber, which is nice. Also, if you've got Gwibber logged in, you will receive little pop-up notifications up here in the top corner, uh, letting you know that your friends have updated their statuses and we'll show you what their statuses are. We have our network notification, we have our audio where you can mute or you can turn it up or down and go full full blast or not. If you're listening to music you have a Banshee control here. We can pause, start, skip to the next or go back to the previous song through Banshee without actually having to launch the full Banshee program to have access to that. We have our clock with our calendar. We also have our user account menu which is handy to have access to if you need to switch user accounts if you have more than one set up. You can do that all from this menu. Uh, you notice that our power down menu now has been changed. Our icon looks like a little gear. Uh, we have some more settings that have been listed under here now. Our system settings are listed here. Display, startup applications, software up to date. We can launch the update manager and go ahead and force software updates. If you have webcams or any, any other kind of USB attached devices, they'll list here. Printers, we can access our printers here as well. We can lock the screen, we can log out, suspend, hibernate, or shut down. I really only have two complaints with Ubuntu 11.10. The system settings is my first complaint. I have a hard time finding settings through the 11.10 system settings menu. Maybe that's just me, but it seems like they're, a lot of the options have been moved around, have been stuffed in other areas, or they're not there at all. Um, if anybody knows how to access the login screen options, let me know, because I've dug through here and I'm really having a hard time finding them, if they're even there. But for the new Ubuntu users, those who may not need to dig in and look for different options, different settings, uh, this is probably just fine for them. I've been using Ubuntu now since, I guess, the old Ubuntu 6.06. .06. And so I'm, I'm used to having access to all those settings. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but it does take a little getting used to. So one of the other options, which was included with 11.04 and has been building momentum ever since Ubuntu 1 was released, is the Ubuntu 1 feature, which is handy. And I will talk about this just very briefly because it is such a handy feature. If you use anything like Dropbox, you can essentially use that through Ubuntu One uh, using their own service. They offer you, I believe they're up to five gigabytes free for every Ubuntu user. Ubuntu One is also becoming a more prevalent backup solution because they now have Windows clients. Uh, they also have Android and iOS clients as well. They also have a couple paid options that you can go through if you want to stream music or access some of your music files from other devices uh, you have to pay for those services but for free they offer five gigs for free it's a free syncing service it syncs up to their their cloud servers and any other machines you have the Ubuntu One client on you have access to those files on as well so that's really handy it's free to use um, so I highly recommend using that 
because one of the big things that a lot of people neglect to do is their backups. What better way to do it than let the computer do it for you in the background? As I mentioned earlier, we no longer have access to a Ubuntu Classic desktop environment. We do, however, have access to a Qt-based Ubuntu 2D option by default, which is very similar to what we installed in our video on Ubuntu 11.04, where we installed Unity 2D, and this is basically the same thing. You can think of it as a Unity no effects option, missing a lot of the fade-ins and fade-outs and transitions and little Windows effects that you got with your full-blown Unity. Uh, this is great for older computers, for computers running older graphics cards or graphics cards that just aren't quite up to the task of running the full-blown Unity. Ubuntu 2D works great for those. In review, Ubuntu 11.10 is a great operating system. It's very polished, it's very snappy thanks to GNOME 3 being included. If you're a fan of Unity, then you'll be right at home. If you're more of a fan of Ubuntu Classic like I am, I'll probably go back and use Ubuntu 11.04 for a little while. I have experimented with the GNOME Classic panel in 11.10 and it's it's got some problems with it. So until that they get that ironed out, I probably won't migrate into 11.10 for my personal use uh, very much. For those who are new to Ubuntu, for those who love Unity, this is a great operating system. It's very polished. You can definitely tell that Canonical is building steam with Ubuntu, that they are growing a large community, even larger than what we've had previously. But going forward, it looks like if you're not that big a fan of Unity, uh, you might as well go ahead and hunker down and start enjoying it because that's looking to become more and more of a building trend that Unity will become more part of Ubuntu as time goes on. With that being said, if you like Ubuntu 11.10, go ahead and swing by the Ubuntu.com site if you haven't downloaded it yet. You can download the ISO, burn your live CD, and go ahead and set it up. If, uh, if you're not that big a fan of Unity, like I said, I probably wouldn't upgrade quite yet, uh, at least not until you do some research on what's been going on with the Ubuntu Classic panel. I did read somewhere that GNOME 2 was forked, that some, some of the community will continue developing on GNOME 2, uh, so that might be an option later. But overall, all in all, if I, have, if I had to rate this out of 10 stars, I would give Ubuntu 11.10, easily probably 9 out of 10. It's great for beginners, it's easy to use, it's simplified. You can tell it was designed to sit down and use right out of the box. You get your hardware detection that's always been great with Ubuntu, uh, you get that back. Uh, you get a very polished desktop overall. So so if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those under the video. Uh, you can swing by our blog at www.techiesmarts.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. Twitter handle is at techiesmarts. Uh, you can find all those links in the description of the video. So once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.